Olivia Jastriel has written a letter to Justice and Correctional Services Minister Ronald Lamola voicing her discontent over the release of former professional tennis champion Bob Hewitt, who was convicted of raping Jastriel. 80-year-old Hewitt was granted parole after spending less than four years in prison for raping two women and an additional case of assault. Grounds for parole for a person convicted of rape and paedophilia are that they have been rehabilitated, they show remorse and take accountability for their actions. According to Olivia, Hewitt has not displayed any of this and she joins us now via Skype to talk more about this. It's great to have you. Thank you very, very much for talking to us here on Morning Live. Morning, dear. So, Minister Lamola put Hewitt's parole process on hold last year because he said it was critical that the justice system consider your participation in the parole process. What happened between then and his release, which has now happened? Well, Leanne, um, first of all, I think that the parole hearing that we attended on the 24th of March was nothing more than to make the parole board look like they were doing their jobs. I do believe that um, it was a pre-decided decision and it didn't matter what I said in that parole hearing, nothing was going to count. Not a single um, note was taken while I spoke. Are you kidding me? So that was, a, I mean, no notes? Perhaps there was a recorder there? Did somebody maybe record what you were saying? No minutes were taken, um, nothing. In, in fact, Leanne, I, Hewitt and his team, which consisted of his advocate and best friend and his daughter-in-law, launched nothing short of a verbal attack on me. They called me disgusting. They called me lots of names. And the abuse that I suffered in the parole hearing was... was it, it was unspeakable point where they stopped. I had to actually leave the room at one stage. Yeah. So as, as what we know is that Hewitt spent three and a half years in prison. That, that, that's, that's what we, we're in the belief of. He was sentenced to six years, so he's, he's, he's served just over half of that. You obviously don't believe that this is anywhere near enough. No, Leanne, you know, and what came out, what was made very clear in all the reports in the hearing was that um, he has no remorse, he is not rehabilitated, and he shows no accountability. In fact, he said to me that he would rather sit there for another three years than admit to what he did. Um, and he says he's never going to admit to what he did. So, no, he's, he's not rehabilitated, and now he's been let, he's been let back out into society. Mm. It just doesn't work that way. Well. Yeah. I mean, that is that, that I know is something that you penned in a letter that you wrote to the minister uh, that you spoke to the fact that there is no remorse. And I mean, you've, you've just said it now that he would he would, as in his words said, he would rather spend more time in jail than admit to the crime that he's been convicted to. I mean, that that in itself must show that there is no remorse. I mean, what do you think is the logic behind him being given parole? Well, they say that, um, you know, they, well, they, they have not given us the, the reasons for his release. What, what they did say was that he has completed anger management courses um, and that he has his anger under control and <laughs> uh, he's a first-time offender, which he can't be a first-time offender because he raped multiple girls. So I'm not quite sure where the first-time offender comes in. And he's not a, he's not a high risk. Um, as far as I'm concerned, paedophiles cannot be rehabilitated. And I don't believe that anybody of 11, 12, 13 years old that he comes into contact with is safe. Yeah. yeah. As a man of 80, does that play any role or any, um, any justification in him getting parole? What, what are your thoughts on that? No, and he must sit. You know, the fact that he's 80 doesn't stop him from, from, from continuing to molest children. Um, it doesn't matter if you're 40 years old or 80 years old. If you want to rape a child or abuse a child, you will find a way to do that. Mm -hmm. 
you know, the, the Justice Department coming out saying that the department had followed all proper channels before his release and that consultation with victims had been done. But as you're saying, for, from your point of view, you feel that the consultations were, uh, they weren't good enough. What did the, the other um, victims say or, or those? Were there anyone else, was there anyone else involved in these, in these hearings? Um, all three girls did. All three girls did put um, representations in. I was the only one there. I have not spoken to the other ladies, okay. um, but we are all unhappy. And, um, you know, for all intents and purposes, yes, they, they followed procedure. But, but did they follow procedure? Because if you read the, the requirements for parole, he does not meet one of the requirements for parole. And when I told them about how I felt the PTSD I suffer from, you know, all those things that come with being a victim of, of, of rape, um, not one of those things was taken into account. So where is it victim-centric? It's not victim-centric. It's 100% perpetrator-centric. And therefore, the system is failing um, victims on a daily basis. And I can understand why victims don't want to speak out. Yeah. I might as well have gone straight back into the lion's den, been raped again, gone back to the trial again because I actually felt like I was on trial when I was in the in the parole hearing. Yeah, I know we've yeah. um, spoken to you and, and, and spoken about the emotions and what you went through in the lead up to it, during it, and it's all, I know you've said before that it almost feels like you're back to where you started, so that there's been absolutely no healing for you during this process. In fact, it is, it's made the situation worse. Uh, I mean, are there any regrets on your side? You, you know what? No, there's no regrets because if I've helped a few people, one person, two people, then you know what? I've, at least I've at least I've I've done something constructive with what happened to me. And Leanne, I'm not going to stop. Justice Ronald Lamola, I want an answer from him. Yeah. If this was, if I was his daughter, would he have allowed this process to happen? I seriously don't think he would have done that. Yeah. I think he would have followed up on it. Now, the matter can, if I'm not mistaken, still be taken on review. Can it? What's the next step for you? We have lodged a formal complaint. Um, I have put, we, well, I've spoken to um, Crispin Peary. I believe that, that um, he is busy working with it. And yes, I do understand that it can be, I'm not entirely sure it can be reviewed. But I certainly want an investigation into the parole board and what their motives were mm. and, and how they came about this conclusion. Because if they're letting other people out, um, you know, what happened to Tasney van Veg? It's yeah. because of poor, poor, uh, poor parole, poor parole procedures. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I know that, you know, the, the department has come out and said that he will be, or he has been released under very, very strict parole conditions. I haven't managed to find the conditions. Perhaps you know them. Well, what do the conditions look like? Um, so he will continue his sentence under house arrest, which means he's at home with his family. Um, he's not allowed to contact any of his um, victims. Uh, he's not allowed to abuse any substances. And, uh, and I think that he has to report into the parole, into a parole officer either once a day or I, I think that's one of the, 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 the stipulations. But if they don't follow up, what's to say he's not going to go, he's not going to leave his property? What's to say his family with his granddaughters aren't going to visit him and something's going to happen? I do not believe that he should be at home with his family. They are, and I'm going to put this on air, they are as bad as he is. Yeah, yeah. Well, the next step, as you say, you're not going to end this here. You're going to continue and challenge this outcome. Um, obviously, at this, this point in, in lockdown, but even though it still says that courts are able to operate during this time, but has it slowed the process down for you is it, uh, as, as it was before? But talk to us about what it has been like in these challenging times as well for you. Well, I kind of live in my own... Um, I kind of live in my own head a bit. So, so it's been very, very difficult. Um, I am receiving counselling um, and I am with a life coach at the moment. So I'm busy working through all of it. And, you know, it, it, it is what it is. Um, I maybe cannot get him back into prison. I can certainly try and fix the system. Yeah. yeah. Or at least make it better for other yeah. people. Yeah. 
Olivia, we leave it there for now, but we thank you for talking to us here on the program. It's not an easy conversation to have. It never is, but as you say, you're trying to help others in this situation and hope that it never happens to them. Olivia Jusriel, uh, giving us her view on the release of convicted rapist and former professional tennis coach Bob Hewitt. As you heard, she, of course, is going to challenge this and uh, hopefully have that uh, parole process reversed, but that's all to be seen in uh, the coming weeks and months, no doubt. Thanks very, very much, Olivia. All right, let's, uh, let's take a break here on the program. We'll get you a couple